It's funny because the things you learn, the things you learn are... Um, the Jack Nicholson is actually Paul Lynch. <laughs> no, that, that, that was... It's like when you really they, treat it... Well, I'm just gonna... Well, I'm not Jack Nicholson, I'm Paul Lynch. Let's have a martini. <laughs> they did this all day on set. Buddy! <laughs> Buddy! <laughs> Yeah, well, I read the book almost over 10 years ago, and uh, I personally, I, I'm a big, you know, outdoors guy that, that likes to, you know, do adventures in the outdoors, and, and I'm a guy that also, you know, is always asking questions about, you know, purpose and meaning and what is life about, and, and all of these things are sort of fundamental to this novel, and so when I read it, I was really uh, you know, struck by it and, and, and felt that it had tremendous spiritual power. And it was very personal to me because it's a, you know, it's a really challenging movie to make and it took me over 10 years and uh, it's that kind of, you know, passion that you need to kind of make these tough movies. So that's why. Nick, for you, this is technically your first Western. Yeah. Uh, what was it about Butcher's Crossing that made you say, one, I want to get into the genre, and two, I want to tell this story. Well, the genre is something I've always wanted to be invited to, and I was somewhat mystified that it took this long to be invited, because <laughs> people, laugh, people laugh when I say I'm from the West, because I'm from California, but that is as West as it gets. But more importantly, I'm, I'm just interested in the human condition, both the good and the bad, the flaws, the inspirations of what it means on this path being a human. And reading the novels, like Conrad and uh, John Williams and Melville about this side of the human condition, this sort of, uh, well, this bloodlust, this greed, this need to win at all costs, uh, forget the uh, ethics, just kill, kill, and, and get the money and have the biggest win to the point of extinction, to the point of genocide, really. I mean, these things are correlating together and, uh, the life source uh, for First Nation people was the bison, so you can connect those dots, what was really going on. So I wanted to play a character that had that, 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 that misguided philosophy, if you will. I thought that would be a challenge, and, and I'm glad I did it, so this was the first time. You no, know, and Fred, you get to kind of be the eyes to that. This is a young man who's, you know, he wants to go find himself, go out west, and gets a whole lot more than he bargains for. Yeah, well, I had been a, a fan of all of John Williams' works. Like the three novels that he wrote are all amazing, um, and and completely different time periods and different genres. But there's a similar theme that is something that I think everyone's talking about that I was really engaged with on for for Will Andrews, which is senseless, vicious ambition um, that's sort of masqueraded as sport or game but in fact is the demolishing of, of, of these creatures at the time. And that, that was one of the best parts of doing this, being in Montana and, and you know, seeing the buffalo come back. Irvin, the idea of working with this production and really highlighting the work that you are doing um, with the Blackfeet Tribe Buffalo Program, what did it mean to have a, a Hollywood production want to tell that story? Yeah, well, you know, we, we've, We've been working long and hard to bring Buffalo back to tribal lands. Um, after being um, hunted to near extinction. Um, and so we've been working really hard but with that to, to return all the Buffalo back to, and for our cultural and our uh, spiritual connection to the animal, they were a big part of us. Throughout our years, we've lost a lot, you know, land, language, our way of religion, uh, Buffalo, all of those things that, in, in my part of, of working with Buffalo is what I can contribute back to <clears throat> returning part of our, our culture. Mm -hmm. And it means a lot to me. And so the movie um, brings some of that or the attention to it that, that all of that devastation of, um, of losing all of those to near extinction. And hopefully in the future that people can see from that, that that it was wrong, I guess, and, and help uh, help our our, uh, our plight, I guess, of bringing back 
um, buffalo to our to our lands. Yeah, Posse reacting back there. Yeah, was that part of what spoke to you about this project? Uh, well, yeah, well, Gabe brought the project to me. He recommended I read the novel. I wasn't aware of John Williams. I'm a Vietnam veteran. I did uh, two tours on an aircraft carrier in the middle of the Gulf of Tonkin where the bloodlust was relentless. Uh, so, And I was part of that. And when I found out John Williams was a Vietnam veteran, I just thought it was interesting that he, want, he wanted to write a coming-of-age story. Rather than write it about his own coming-of-age story in Vietnam, he wrote it about this young man, Will, going out west. So I thought it was just beautiful. And I always tell people, I, I went into Vietnam as John Wayne, because my grandfather told me that's what I had to do. And after my experience in the Gulf of Tonkin, with what, with what I saw and witnessed as a, as a hospital corpsman, I was a medic, I came out of Vietnam as Lenny Bruce. I was used, I was squeezed dry, I knew exactly, but that's how I came of age. So when, when I see the movie and I see young Will, you know, innocently going out to become a man, and at the end of his journey, that's exactly what... Um, it's my experience, and it's uh, a lot of men who uh, have gone to war have that experience. You go in one person, you come out a man, but was that really necessary? You know, So it is a relentless uh, win-at-all-costs kind of situation. So uh, it, it's very personal to me. Well, Fred, for you, I mean, this is um, one of your like first major leading roles where you're in practically every scene. Um, and I know you're a, f a fan of Nick's work, as, as we all are. You know, what was it like getting a chance to learn opposite um, somebody that you admire so much? I mean, it, it, it's, hard, it's hard. It's funny because the things you learn, the things you learn are... Um, the Jack Nicholson is actually Paul Lamb. <laughs> no, that, that was... It's like when you really treat it... Well, I'm just gonna. Well, I'm not Jack Nichols. I'm Paul Lynn. Let's have a martini. They did this all day on Saturday. Buddy, <laughs> buddy. But it, it's the key. Um, it, it's, uh, it is a thing where I think the beginning. You know, I'm I, 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 one of my favorite actors of all time, truly. And and I've seen so much, and it was like one of those things. And someone who clearly loves cinema deeply. And so I think like. I knew that, but it's that thing where you're nervous at first to say stuff, and you really treated me like a peer from the beginning, which meant so much to me, and was a way that you could kind of jump into the work, and rather than, you know, me fumbling and spitting all the respect that I had, like, you know, saying, oh, I love you in this movie, in this movie, in this movie, <laughs> we could just get to it, and through that, I felt like, it, that was like the that's the greatest way to learn and the greatest privilege of learning. Oh, so thank you. But the major. gateway was laughter. Uh, yes, right? yes. Was, we had yes. this terrific sense of humor together, and we were laughing all the time, which relaxed all of us, and we could laugh, and then we could get serious. Yeah, you, know? you learn something after causing so much pain that that you wonder: is there any way that I, I if only I could have known this before I created all this suffering? That that's a really complex and terrifying and very real, I think, idea. The the only real pairing for it is to be able to do Paul Lind impressions throughout it as well. And to joke steam. and to play. Well, it, it happens yeah. all the time. Yeah. If you go to that crappy little corner of your mind, you need to have a break and have a few laughs. So I'm glad Fred and I could do that. So we're, there was a lot of Paul Lind. <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot of... Paul Lynn's Halloween special on the set. <laughs> yeah, I'm in a great mood. I had a little girl two days ago. I'm yeah, yeah, okay. Smile for the camera. <laughs> well, as you think about, you know, the projects ahead and what maybe she will watch you in one day, what is what is a genre that you still haven't tackled yet that you want to since now this one is checked off? Well, because I have uh, August Francesca in my life, I'm going to be singing lullabies again. And so I think I'm going to probably have to get that musical going. Finally, for the first time. You're, you're a real singer. I'm not, but I'm going to try. Paul, what, what, do you think, what do you think Nick could, could handle? Is it, I would like to see you guys make more movies together. So can we come up so with some I. sort of like Western musical that you all can do? I'm sure uh, you can do anything. Well, it would be <laughs> Oklahoma, right? Ah. Ah. <laughs> Gabe, are you ready? Can you can you give us an Oklahoma? No, not sing. <laughs> but, About a movie? Yeah, might as well. I'd like. I want to work with these guys. You know, they're all they all made by movie. <laughs>